This video is sponsored by Pins and Needles Kits. Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and every Wednesday I post a new tutorial to help sewers of all skill levels learn new sewing projects and techniques. Now this week I've actually partnered up with the Pens and Needles Kits company to bring you a tutorial for the panel tote. This is a really fun tote bag and I got the pattern and every single thing needed to make the bag in the September Pens and Needles box. Now if you don't have the pattern already, you can go over to the Pens and Needles website that I'll have linked down below and you can get it over there. Now if you don't have the pattern, make sure to keep watching the video anyway because I will be showing a lot of different techniques and things that can be applied to all sorts of other patterns so you can still learn some tips and tricks even if you aren't going to make this exact bag. Then, of course, at the end of the video, I will announce the winner from my last Pens and Needles giveaway. So let's get started by seeing all the supplies that are needed to make the panel tote. They included about two yards of fabric in total, and this is Moda fabric, and it is absolutely beautiful. You will also need the Basel foam for the strap and the bag body, thread, tweezers are helpful for turning out corners, cording to make the piping, and of course the pattern itself. I got all of my supplies sent right to my front door in the pins and needles kits, so I don't have to worry about finding each individual item on my own. Now let's get started on making the tote. I used the pattern details to cut out all of my bag pieces. Now I did stray a little bit from what pieces I cut, from what fabrics, from what the pattern said, but I just planned it out ahead of time and I was able to do this because there was enough extra fabric in the kit itself. And so I really like how my bag turned out and the different ways I situated the fabrics compared to what it shows on the pattern. Okay, first off is the piping. Cut the cord in half and lay it on the strip cut for the piping. And fold the fabric around the cord so the pretty sides are on the outside. Do this for both pieces. Switch your sewing machine foot to a zipper foot and carefully sew right along the edge of the cord so that it is encased in the fabric. Trim the piping so you have four pieces measuring 14 inches long. Place one piece of piping on each long edge of your two center pieces. Clip into place, then sew to attach, still using your zipper foot and sewing on the same seam line as before. With right sides together, place the side pieces on top of the center, lining up the edges. Clip the layers in place and sew one last time with the zipper foot. You should now have your bag front and back with the center panel piping on each side, then an outer fabric on each side. Use pens or basting spray to baste the bag outer pieces onto the Basel foam.
If you have a walking foot, put it on your sewing machine and sew quilting lines from top to bottom about one inch apart. Trim up the edges to make sure they are square. Then mark two and a half inches in from each bottom edge. Use a long ruler to go from that mark to the top corner and trim with a rotary cutter. You should now have two bag pieces that are trapezoid shape. Use the template in the pattern to cut out a semicircle from the top center of the bag front and back. Then use one of the bag outer pieces to cut both lining pieces to the same shape. Place the two outer pieces right sides together and sew along the sides and bottom with a quarter inch seam allowance. Using a ruler, mark a one inch square on each of the bottom corners and cut out the square. Open up the corners so the seams match up. Make sure the seam allowances are going in opposite directions and clip. Sew across with a quarter inch seam allowance to box the corners. Now onto the pockets. Lay the pocket pieces right sides together in sets of two. Sew around the outer edges with a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving a couple of inches open in the middle of one long side. Trim off the corners and turn right sides out through the opening. Poke out the corners and press with an iron. Center the pocket on your lining piece about three inches up from the bottom and sew the sides and bottom to attach. Make sure that opening you left is on the bottom side. If you want the pocket to have any sections, go ahead and sew those now as well. I sewed all of the seams twice on my pockets to make sure it's extra strong. Sew the lining together the same way as the outer, including the boxed corners. The only difference is make sure to leave an opening in the bottom of the lining about five or six inches wide and this is what we will turn our bag through later. Turn one of the bag pieces right sides out and place one inside the other so the right sides are together and the top edges line up. Clip along the top edge, then sew all around the top. Trim the corners and snip the curves. Then turn the bag right sides out through the opening in the bottom of the lining. This would have probably been easier if I had turned the outer right sides out earlier and then put the lining on the outside before sewing but it worked out okay, just took a little more persuading to get it turned out. Then close up the opening in the lining with a top stitch. Then tuck the lining back into the bag. Make sure it's nice and situated, then top stitch around the entire top. Your bag should look complete other than needing handles. Now onto those handles. Cut one of your strap pieces in half and sew one half to each of your remaining two strap pieces. Press the seams open. You should now have two really long strips. 
Lay them both right sides together and sew along one long seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Open the strip up and press the seam open. Then press each long edge inward a half inch. Cut the strip in half so that you have two strap pieces. Tuck your Basel strap material under the seam allowances. Make sure you have a half inch space at each end without the stabilizer. Fold up the short end, then fold over the other half of the strap to fully enclose the raw edges and the stabilizer. Add some clips to hold everything in place, then sew along all the edges of the strap piece. Repeat for the second strap. Mark three inches up from each end of the handles. Fold the handles in half between the markings and sew along the same stitching line as before, stopping at the marks three inches from each end. You should have two handles that look like this. Now all that's left is to sew them on your bag. Measure two inches down from the top edge and position the straps into place. Sew a square to attach each handle into the bag and you are done. This bag is so cute and it is so different from any that I've made before. And so I hope you check out that pattern and give this tote bag a try. You will not be disappointed. Don't forget that there is a coupon code in the description box of this video so that if you want to give the pens and needles kits a try, you can save a little bit of money and then get a kit like the one I showed you today sent straight to your doorstep. Now it's time to select the winner from the giveaway in my last pens and needles video. And so I used a random comment selector to choose and the winner is... So congratulations to the winner. You have 48 hours to contact me either via YouTube messaging or on my Facebook page. You can send me a message there with your mailing address so that I can get that information sent to the pins and needles um, ladies and they will get your giveaway prize sent out to you. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite type of bag is to carry. I definitely love to carry tote bags and crossbody bags the most. And then right over here to the side, I am going to have a playlist full of all of the other tote bag tutorials I've done here on my channel. And they range from very easy unlined totes all the way up to fully lined and quilted tote bags. There is a great variety in there that you should definitely check out. And then I'll be back next Wednesday with another new video. And until then, happy sewing.